another issue that I saw that I thought was pretty funny and interesting for the most part was this. Let me show you this for the most part. See if I can get it up on here. There's that one. Where is it? Oh, I didn't load it in time, did I? Yes, I did. There we go. So, um, I don't know if some of you know, but this young lady went viral on the internet lately because she decided to out um, Adam Levine and the fact that she'd had an affair with this guy, right? And I'm sure most of you are aware of who flipping Adam Levine is, right? In terms of him being the lead singer of fucking Maroon 5. And essentially, she decided to, you know, blow up his spot and tell the world that she'd been she has been involved in a affair with him for what a year or something right going on it and it's been quite big news of her you know on my side of the internet and the funny thing about it has been all the debate that sort of transpired around it right because for the most part my initial reaction to it was that um everybody involved in the story with the exception of the wife maybe you could include it in some respect because there is an element of me that believes people especially in relationships like that are aware of what their partner is doing and usually have to decide are you going to confront it or you're going to just ignore it and hope it goes away and most people unfortunately because they're in love decide you know to go for the latter and hope it goes away and it doesn't and obviously the more public it gets the more hard it gets to pull away because loads of conflicting issues at hand blah 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 so everybody's kind of semi at fault but for the most part the two people who are definitely at fault is the mistress and obviously Adam Levine for stepping out in his marriage and obviously for the girl for baiting up the spot and not doing it even in like a way of like hey you know I'm alerting people of this big being guy being an abuser or whatever it may be it just seemed like an opportunity to basically get some clout um, boost, boost her following boost her notoriety and essentially get us off in headlines which has obviously worked for the most part <clears throat> but the other side of the story which is quite interesting is the fact that Adam Levine is married to this girl whose name is Bahati Prince Solo, is it Prince Low? Prince Low, how do you pronounce that? I think it's Behati Prince Low, right? Behati Prince Low, who also happens to be a Victoria's Secrets model, right? So people are just basically getting around to the idea that when it comes to cheating, especially when it comes to cheating in marriages, it's really less of an issue of the fact of the person being attractive or not attractive and more so to do with the issue of the person having options or not. And this is kind of the unfair and kind of real life situations that kind of transpire around this whole issue. So as you can see, there's a wife there, obviously, you know, modeling Victoria's Secrets, you know, you would kind of consider her to be one of the, you know, top 1% women in the world in terms of looks and body and all that sort of stuff stuff so people are kind of shocked like how the hell could she cheat on someone like that right with just a regular run-of-the-mill instagram model and i'm going to maybe expound on that a little bit more but let's kind of play the clip of the lady herself basically exposing the whole situation which went viral of course over the last couple of days so here she is on twitter or no it's on tiktok actually making this announcement but it was shared everywhere and her name is what summoner stroff i'm just gonna rip the band-aid off because i've retaken this like 10 times now <laughs> Essentially, I was having an affair with a man who's married to a Victoria's Secret model. At the time, you know, I was young, I was naive, and I mean, quite frankly, I feel exploited. I wasn't in the scene. Boo. First red flag for me. Attributing you hooking up with a married dude for like more than a year and calling it exploitation is manipulation and flipping, ob you know changing the narrative to suit your cause to the nth degree you know you knew what you were doing you're just as much to blame as he is let's not try to make this out to be he was somehow uh, you know um he somehow had you in some kind of captivity he held you against your will he didn't like i am now um so i was definitely very easily manipulated we're in five is practically you know what the funny thing is about that easy manipulation thing on one hand people like this will be like hey i'm a girl boss I do my own thing. No man can tell me to do this. I'm on my run my own clock or whatever, whatever. But on the other side, you want to cry victim. And I've always said you can't have two. You can't have both. Sorry, you can't be the flipping girl boss and also be the victim. You have to choose one or the other. Um, but obviously, in this case, because you want to, you know, curry favor from the public and make it seem as if you are a victim, the best way to do it is to paint the narrative in that way. So it obviously makes you look like one. Elevator music at this point. So I'm sure you know who Adam Levine is. 
So now she's showing the screenshot of her texting with Adam Levine via Instagram DMs. The interesting thing about this too, that you see quite often when it comes to people who cheat, especially high profile people, a lot of it seems to happen on social media. You rarely see text chains of people DMing or messaging each other on like WhatsApp or iMessage or SMS. It's usually always through Instagram DMs. I wonder what, that's, well, I guess the reason why is because there's probably, the person you probably want to cheat on with is definitely going to be on Instagram, right? There's more options to choose from, but it's funny that it always seems to happen on Instagram DMs. So you can just imagine the amount of damage or carnage somebody could do if they have managed to find a way to hack Instagram DMs on the back end and go through loads of loads of notable celebrities DMs and see well Guan in there because there's a lot of fuck shit happening in those DMs but this DM is, is, is from Abner Levine and the girl Abner Levine says in the screenshot it's truly unreal how fucking hot you are <laughs> like it blows my mind <laughs> pure horny conversations she replies back saying I mean I think the same seeing you in person I was like I'm fucked and he says, you are 50 times hotter in person to the girl. And so am I. Ha, ha, ha. And with the laughing, crying, laughing emojis, which obviously you usually when you do laughing and crying emojis, you're usually trying to not make it seem like you're being too up your own ass. It's kind of a weird defense mechanism to not make you sound too crazy. But the fact that Adam Levine thinks he's 50 times hotter in real life says a lot about him, right? He's like an adult fuckboy, isn't it? How old is Adam Levine age-wise? Is he like 50? Adam Levine age. He must be 50, right? Or is he... Oh, he's 43 years old. To be a fuckboy at 43 years old, he's like the apex fuckboy as well. He must be like the the kind of... um, What you call it? He must be the the archetype from all fuckboys in terms of their looks, right? He's got that beard going on, the arm tattoos. He's got these fucking corny tattoos all over his body. That look amazing, don't get me wrong, but they're tattoos made for Instagram, right? Just, you know, nice artistically placed tattoos that kind of would get all the girls melting and all that sort of shit. He did that whole stunt with having the fake rose tattoo on his face. You remember that? Um, uh, what, is it? what is it? Rose tat face tattoo. I'm sure I must have spoken about this before, but I remember him doing that little fake stunt with the face tattoo, which wasn't real. I was told, I think it said it was some sort of fake thing. Um, but I don't know sure if it is. Who knows if it is now? I don't really care. But, you know, just pure fuckboy stuff, right? Even his face is pulling here, tongue sticking out, walking down the street with his top off, you know, showing off the bod and all that to all the, to all the paps out there. Pure cringy fuckboy shit that, you know, if anything, any girl should have their red flag sort of like, you know, waving in the air if you see it. And it continues. Um, but Adam and I were seeing each other for about a year. After I stopped talking to him over, you know, a period of months, this is uh, how he came back into my life. Notice, came back into my life. Not, I didn't, you know. So he definitely gave him some some action still. It's kind of gross to see a notification from daddy, the family, and then see Adam Levine trying to creep in the comments. <laughs> Horrendous. He said, okay, serious question. I'm having another baby, and if it's a boy, I really uh, want to name it Sumner. She's got a friend called Balin. That must have, that says a lot about the lady, isn't it? <laughs> Balin, what kind of name is that? You okay with that? Dead serious. Um, <laughs> I was like... This is more so, this is not even shock the face she's pulling here. This is more so like, she's basically sucking herself off in it. This is a weird kind of, um, this is more about her as it is about exposing a serial cheater. This is basically what it is. This is my moment in the sun. Oh my God, you want to name your kid after me with my dumb name? It's like, no, you don't. And then look, also, I don't know. Let's just continue. Like, I'm in hell. Like, I have to be in hell at this point. <laughs> I mean, my morals were unknowingly compromised i was completely look at that phrase my morals were unknowingly compromised that's a new one isn't it? it that's a new way to kind of avoid all accountability my morals were unknowingly compromised after one year fair enough if it was a one night hookup or if it was like a series of drunken events where you don't really remember what happened and you feel like something untold might happen cool but consistently meeting somebody for a year who you know has a wife and maybe some kids and shit is it is what it is isn't it you both were involved in the situation just admit your fault say you're sorry say it was an embarrassing part of your history it's something that you kind of had in your chest that you had to let go and you had to kind of let it out there and keep it moving but you know <laughs> those phrases are fucking nuts man absolutely nuts they manipulated i didn't heal this privately i never wanted to come forward because yeah right obviously i know the implications that come with doing what i do 
what implications? You're an Instagram model. No one gives a fuck that you fucked Adam Levine. If anything, it'll probably increase your bookings, right? Do you know I mean? Because you're more well known and those brands just want to get their product in front of people who are captive and engaged and people are going to be engaged in you for the next, what, couple of days and then the story will obviously kind of die. It's already dying now at the moment, but this idea that you're kind of get blackballed from the industry because you expose Adam Levine for being a cheat is ridiculous. <laughs> no, you won't. Making money the way I do and being an Instagram model, um, so being tied to a story like this, it's like, I know the stereotypes. I had sent... What? That you're a fault? It is what it is, isn't it, really? There's no stereotypes. It just is what it is. Your actions are a pre your actions are basically a, a way to kind of describe you as a person and you did something reprehensible. It is what it is, isn't it? it I'm not here to judge, but, you know, what, what else can you be? You're not a flipping astrophysicist, that's for sure. Um... I had sent some screenshots recklessly to a few friends I thought I trusted, and one of them had attempted to sell to a tabloid. Um, of course. So here I am. But anyway, in general, the whole point of this whole thing that I wanted to basically um, talk about was the fact that I think for some reason, I'm not too sure why it is, but there seems to be a real big misconception when it comes to um, when it comes to flipping men, high profile men. Um, cheating on their partners for the most part right and i think a lot of it comes down to this weird idea that you know if the person is hot or is attractive anyway why would you step out and go do other things people especially women can't kind of get it through their heads that for the most part when it comes to high profile dudes um less 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 so to do good looking guys but i think when it comes to high profile dudes in general the fact that they have options, most guys who just explore them anyway. I think the guys who don't have the options maybe find it easier to be in a committed relationship. But those who have options and who have opportunities to kind of step out usually will take them, especially when they're presented in a way that just makes it easy. You know, you know, are you out in an event? You travel a lot. Um, maybe somebody slides into your DMs. You don't have to make the first move. Most guys, especially if they're flipping, you know, artists and you know already have a bit of an ego and see somebody basically you know, hyping them up or making them feel special will definitely kind of, you know, try to dip their toes in that situation and get involved for the most part. And that's the unfair situation about it. It's less so to do with like what the person that you're married with did. And it's more so to do with the option that you have available as a dude for the most part. With women, maybe it's a bit more complex. Maybe, you know, there's a element of emotional teaching all that sort of stuff that's not really physical and stuff that can happen. Um, whatever it may be, mental stuff, I don't know. But for men, for the most part, especially if you're a guy that's high profile, let's forget good looking, forget your looks or anything, just in terms of somebody that's got a notoriety behind you, you just have more options to do it so you take advantage of. Most regular dudes don't have the options so you don't even have the options to do it in the first place. You just get kind of given what you're, you, you take what you're given and just you're happy enough that somebody's willing to kind of allow you to basically get in between those legs, you know what I mean? Um, but this just, you know, it just is the nature of the business. And I think the unfortunate part of it, if you are a partner of somebody like an Adam Levine, you kind of have to come to realization that most likely a partner is going to cheat and you have to decide, you know, what your stance will be if that news does happen. Are you going to be somebody that takes a stand and decides to split with them? Or are you somebody that's going to be okay with the situation, try and manage it and say, hey, I know you're an international superstar rock star whatever you are pop rock whatever fucking shit he does i know that things happen you might have groupies my stuff happen on the road and i just want you to just make sure that you respect the household you respect the family you respect me and our kids or whatever it may be and don't do anything publicly embarrassing so if you're gonna do stuff make sure no one finds out make sure the press doesn't find out and it's cool and don't bring it back home and that's probably it that's what you have to decide either you're going to stand either you're going to stand against it or you're going to make it work but this idea that it's never going to happen is really really naive because now we're seeing doesn't matter what the actual wife looks like and again she's extremely attractive by conventional standards you know still if you're a dude who has options you will also cheat on this woman which is really wild to think about it as a regular civilian guy but it does happen on a regular basis you know what i mean i think most men out there or most women should have had their eyes open when the whole beyonce and jay-z story happened because for the most part a lot of women out there would consider jay-z to be quite ugly right in terms of his physical attributes and whatnot I have, i've even heard some women say it doesn't matter how rich he is they would never get with him sort of thing so the fact that somebody that looks like him would cheat on beyonce would obviously i think should open people's eyes to say 
you know, powerful men who are not known or whatever it may be have options and they're always going to explore them. Well, most of them will explore them. If they don't explore them, that's when you definitely got a flipping diamond on your flipping hand and you should hold that guy close to your chest as much as possible and never let that person go because, again, it's very, very rare. But, you know, um, that summer store woman is absolutely disgusting and reprehensible. She didn't do this to bring any awareness or attention to Adam being a creep or for being an abuser or whatever it may be. Just did it to kind of boost her own profile. And in the process of kind of sharing your truth, she is inadvertently destroyed a family, destroyed a, a marriage, um, and essentially kind of painted herself to be the other woman forever and ever now well, you know what i mean unless she does something incredibly amazing in her own career the only thing people will basically ascribe to her was that she was the other woman in that whole adam levine and victoria seeker model sort of issue so it really is a bit of an own goal she did shoot herself in the foot for what a couple of hundred follow a couple of hundred thousand followers maybe a book deal maybe Maybe a TV appearances, maybe, and I don't really think it's worth it. So bit of a bit of a faux pas in that regard, but you know, I guess she was bored at home with nothing to do and wanted to kind of get a bit of traction. And so far, it's worked, isn't it? So I guess all is fair in love and war.